On the 10th day of October, Halloween gave to me 10 children creeping, 9 Roddies seizing, 8 snowy mazes, 7 bacons digging, 6 doorways bending, 5 children yowling, 4 zombie bulls, 3 haunted mirrors, 2 monster houses, and a fog that makes it hard to see. Well, hey, everybody, welcome back to another edition of the 31 Days of Halloween. It is October 10th, uh, which makes it Saturday. Uh, So, first of all, happy weekend. Uh, I hope you're having a good one. Um, I picture you listening to this with your morning coffee, assuming you listen to this in the morning and drink coffee. I don't know why. Um, But thanks for listening. Uh, It it has been, as I've said before, an absolutely tremendous amount of fun. Uh, to watch all these movies and, and kind of discuss them in this format uh, and then sort of use that as a vehicle to just celebrate Halloween. Uh, as always is my favorite time of year. I've had numerous discussions lately uh, with people about uh, the leaves turning, the the chill in the air, a little bit of a crisp feel to uh, to, to the, the air outside. And yeah, it's just gorgeous, man. And as well as, you know, Halloween being around the corner, it is, uh, we are three weeks, uh, to the day from Halloween. So, uh, very, very exciting. So in addition to all of that, uh, we're doing something kind of special this weekend. Um, you know, I said, we're going to mix in some new stuff and it's not going to get a whole lot newer than this, uh, until the next time we do a new thing, uh, or whatever. Uh, <laughs> no, uh, we're doing the, the haunting of Bly Manor and Hey, listen, you can call it a cheat. I say it's, uh, going into extra innings. Um, we are covering this over two days. Uh, today we're going to be talking about episodes one through five and then tomorrow, uh, Sunday, October 11th, we will be talking about episodes, uh, six through nine. So let's get into it. Shall we? Um, first of all, here's something I didn't know going into this. Cause I, uh, I had kept myself very much away from media about the haunting of Bly Manor. Uh, I had not seen a single trailer. I didn't know who was in it exactly. I knew there were some people returning from, uh, from Hill house. Um, I knew that Flanagan was writing and directing, although I, I was not aware that he was not writing and directing all of it. So I went into it pretty much as blind as I feel a viewer can in this day and age, in this day of miracles and wonders. Um, and all right. So look, first of all, there's going to be a lot of spoilers. Uh, let me say up front, if you don't want to listen to any more, uh, then, do I recommend it? I'm not sure yet. Maybe you check back tomorrow and I'll tell you, but, uh, I've, I've kind of complicated feelings about this show. And, uh, and so we're going to dig into it right now it, with fair warning. We're going to talk very freely about the events of the first five episodes of the haunting of Bly Manor, uh, which just dropped on Netflix. And in fairness, um, I haven't watched more than this. I, I've watched the first five episodes. As soon as it was over, I sat down to record this. So these are my fresh thoughts that I, I fully allow uh, and hope that you will uh, also that my thoughts could change over time. They could evolve over time and, and could certainly recontextualize once I get to the end of this. Uh, but, you know, it's whatever, nine-ish hours of, of television and, uh, and therefore it's going to cover two days, uh, here on the program. But, uh, at any rate, so pretty much from jump, it's clear that Flanagan, uh, Flanagan is both the creative influence from, for this show, which is very clear, but he is also not, he, he, he is not the writer and director of every episode, the way that he was on Hill House. Hill House feels very much of of a piece. You know, when I watch uh, 
the the haunting of hill house which i've done a couple of times i've even watched the extended blu-ray of it um i always get the feeling that this is like one great big book that is unfolding and i'll say off the bat that a lot of times my feeling with haunting of blind manor is that some of this stuff could be condensed um that some of the reveals aren't maybe as revealing as they think they are. So let's kind of take it maybe character by character, I suppose. So this is obviously it's a, a an adaptation of uh, the the turn of the screw. Um, it is as far as TV and film adaptations go, probably the most famous is the Innocence of uh, way back in the day, which is a great movie and. It's been a long time since I've seen it, but watching The Haunting of Bly Manor, there's a lot of nods to it. They're like, oh, right, that's from the original The Innocence. A lot of reflection stuff in the windows and that kind of thing. It like it has the music of The Haunting of Hill House. It has some of the, the trappings of all that, and a lot of that stuff I really like. like. The show is smart about beginning with, hey... Uh, would you like to hear a ghost story? It is, uh, Carlo Gagino from, uh, uh, Haunting of Hill House, you know, played the mother in that. Um, you know, apparently this is going to be a story that kind of bookends the series. And I believe I know what character she is, but, uh, basically she shows up at a wedding and tells this story as people are trading ghost stories. And you know how I love that. If you listen to the show, you know what Bo loves as much as anything is someone saying, you know, 11.55. Time enough for one more story to keep us warm. Uh, and that's kind of what happens here. It's Carlo Gangino saying, "I would you like to hear a ghost story? This didn't happen to me. It's not my story. But it's a story I know. And so that is how this begins the 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 haunting of Bly Manor um it it stars very notably uh what's her name uh Victoria Pedretti who played um the the youngest crane daughter in Hill House the one who was the ghost throughout the uh throughout the series I uh, spoilers I guess for the first episode of the haunting of Hill House um so she is the main character. She plays an au pair who is hire, hired by Henry Thomas, who is doing a pretty good British accent, or it's good to my ear. It's probably terrible, but to an American like me, sounds you know, dead on, Henry. Good job, Hank. So he's doing a pretty good American a or uh, British accent, and he hires her. He is the uncle uh, who manages the estate of his now deceased uh, brother and sister-in-law, who have left behind, uh, very tragically, two children. The children are a bit troubled, uh, as, as it happens. Um, Flora and Miles are the kids' names. And uh, so a new, uh, the, an au pair has died, uh, has killed herself under uh, uh, somewhat mysterious circumstances, and a new au pair is brought in, that is Danny, who is played by uh, Victoria Pedretti, and, uh, and that's kind of the setup, right? Like the kids are kind of creepy. Um, Danny is, uh, as the new au pair meets the staff, um, notably Owen, uh, who is played by Rahul Kohli. I, I hope I'm pronouncing his name correctly, who is maybe the most likable character on the show. He is the, the Luke, uh, this year of the, uh, the haunting of, uh, seasons from Mike Flanagan. Um, he's, he's really charming and kind of wonderful. And, uh, so Owen is a chef who has come home to this town of Bly to look after his, uh, mother has dementia. So he serves as the cook of Bly Manor. Um, and you know, it's all, it's like a real small operation here. It's the Owen, the, the cook, uh, the housekeeper, Hannah, uh, the gardener, um, the sassy gardener, um, whose name I can't remember. Hold on. Let me find the sassy gardener. Okay. So I, it's an actress named Amelia Eve who plays Jamie, the gardener. Um, and so all these characters are kind of bouncing around in this giant house, uh, because miles is, has been sent home, uh, from the last school he attended for being a monster. 
uh, and murdering the the bird of his headmaster. And much like uh, Haunting of Hill House, yeah, uh, because this show is very much like, how can we do that again? It, there's a lot of jumping around in time uh, where you have characters kind of flashing back to previous events. In fact, the the, the fifth episode, the one I, that I just wrapped up, um, involved the housekeeper, uh, Hannah, who is played by, uh, Tania Miller and, and she's quite good on the show. Um, there's, oh, 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 let's not forget, uh, the shithead, like Luke, uh, from Haunted Hill House, my favorite character, charming, uh, incredibly, uh, like a heartbreaking character. You just wanted to root for the poor guy. And, uh, that actor, Uh, Oliver Jackson Cohen plays Peter, who is sort of a valet to Henry Thomas, you know, sort of his right hand man and is uh, notably was fucking the former um, au pair uh, who killed herself. But uh, before uh, she killed herself, uh, Peter went missing and uh, and and there is some mystery kind of surrounding his death. Um, although I have to say what I thought had happened to him is not what happened to him. Um, but let's get into it. So there are all these characters kind of banging around together. Uh, the kids are, are being creepy. Danny's haunted by the fact that she's secretly lesbian and, uh, her, her fiance, uh, got killed the moment she was like, look, uh, we, we were about to get married and maybe it's not a great idea on account of, I don't want to get married to you. She kind of omits like I, by the way, the lady who was fitting me for the wedding dress, I was kind of crushing on her while you were, you know, your mom is talking about me dressing in her dress for uh, our wedding. Uh, but so he freaks out, gets out of the car that they're having this discussion in and gets smacked by a truck. All this is teased by the fact that he pops up in a bunch of episodes with glasses that look like uh, headlights, a la like Sin City or something like that. It's kind of it, like the imagery is really cool, but it's one of those things that's teased for like three episodes. And this is kind of one of my bigger complaints with the series is that it teases this stuff along. And you're like, yeah, I know. I've seen, I've seen movies before. You know, he is your brother, husband, fiance, whatever. The headlights mean he was killed by a car. That's exactly what happened. And then as soon as it's revealed, like, oh, she has lesbian tendencies or uh, is it? She hasn't come out and said that she's lesbian, but that's kind of the implication here. Um, and there's one there's a scene with her in the gardener where Jamie conveniently they're like three women. Uh, at this house, two of them happen to be lesbian. I mean, that's the story they're telling. That's fine. But that is, you know, by sheer numbers, statistically crazy that that would be the case. I would think, um, at any rate, but yeah, so she's kind of doing this au pair gig because she's running from that. The fact that she feels responsible for the death of, uh, her fiance and, you know, like, I understand that that's a, and, and poor uh, 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 Victoria Pedretti in two se uh, two series from Mike Flanagan at this point. Um, she has watched her, her boyfriend and or husband die horribly in front of her. Uh, and, you know, the haunting of Ipswich Estate or whatever. Like somebody's just going to spontaneously combust. It's going to be like the boys where a Flash type character runs through. Uh, her, 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 her partner, her life mate. Yeah. Poor girl. Anyway. So there's all that going on They're Like all these characters have, have a lot of backstory to them, but again, we got to compare this to Haunting of Hill House because that this is the extension of that. And it just doesn't have, it doesn't have the deafness that a uh, Mike Flanagan brings to a project like this, where you have all these Characters and timelines and, and storylines kind of jumbled together, but it all feels very organic. And, and it, it feels very natural. It's not jarring at all until it, it wants to be. And it held its secrets well. Um, and this is a show that doesn't 
you know, uh, Bly Manor doesn't really hide itself very well. Like, you know, the very, very early on, they have they really lean on this conversation about possession and so forth. And immediately you're like, oh, so the kid's possessed. And then when you hear, oh, Peter went missing, it's like, oh, well, the kid's possessed by Peter. And then there's an entire episode based around this kid doing all the shit that Peter used to do right after you see Peter do it. And you're just like, I, I fucking get it. Come on show. I'm not that stupid. And also there's a reveal within the same episode that, that episode five where you're like, I, again, if you thought this was surprising in any way, the fact that you like, you have telegraphed this for three episodes. Come on now. We have all seen television and movies and, and maybe that's the, the overall, this is my problem with the first five episodes of The Haunting of Bly Manor. There's stuff I really like. I, I feel like I'm really bagging on it. There's stuff I really like. I, like I said, I think the Owen character is great. He's got a great speech about losing his mother uh, at a bonfire. Um, you know, there like it, there are times where it hits the emotional beats really well. But there are plenty of times, too, where, oh my goodness, it is it is just a hot mess. Like... Uh, like I said, there, there's this, uh, telegraphing of the narrative, uh, when you're jumping around in time, uh, between the au pairs and their storylines and so forth, there are just times where I'm like, I just, I don't feel like I know this character well enough to, to care what's happening, but we're also not investing the kind of time in this character for me to really buy into her. But it's that catch 22 of like, I'm not sure I want that episode, but I feel like I kind of need that episode to really get on board with her, uh, which is the the original au pair, uh, Rebecca. Like, everybody talks about her, about how great she is, and you see her in scenes where, like, she'll say, like, I know I'm fucking up uh, having this affair with Peter, but I really, you know, I, I really like him, and he fucks great, so, meh. And it's that kind of stuff where you're like, I, I don't know that I can totally get on board with you as like I said, just you as a character. Um, at any rate folks, uh, I mean, I know I'm all over the place, but kind of, that's the feeling I have in this show at the, at the end of the day, let me try to boil this down to, to some kind of coherent set of thoughts. The haunting of Bly Manor feels like it lives in the shadow of the haunting of Hill house because it's trying a lot of the same narrative tricks, but I don't think it has the same, it, it, it's attempting the same degree of difficulty and it's failing more often than Haunting of Hill House did. Uh, Haunting of Hill House, I don't think is perfect. I think that last episode uh, kind of leaves something to be desired, uh, thematically speaking. But uh, I think that is, is sort of a, a minor complaint um, given how much I really like that as a whole. Like I said, that's a long uh, viewing and I've seen it at least twice now. I might have I seen it three times? No, I think it's just the twice. But uh, I considered watching it again this Halloween. Still might, still might. Um, and and so because it lives in the shadow of the Haunting of Hill House and and is sort of failing to live up to those expectations, uh, that's disappointing. You know, I should take it on its own merits. But even then, I think it's I think it's got strong performances. Um, I think that the writing is occasionally really, really good and occasionally feels very predictable and stereotypical of this genre. Um, we've been watching a lot of haunted house movies. Like we've, we've been watching the haunting and the legend of hell house and the shining and shit like that. And there are moments in haunting of hill house, like, uh, uh, that episode with the, you know, the competing one shots, uh, is just a, a masterpiece of direction and, and wonderful filmmaking. And there's, again, there are, are tricks in Bly Manor that attempt that and get close, but it all feels like a B minus attempt to recreate the magic of, of Haunting of Hill House. Um, big shout out to, uh, Victoria Pedretti, who is, is acting her ass off in this movie uh, or in the series. 
and and is doing a great job. Like there are so many things that are good about it, and and I'm half-heartedly saying like. I'm interested to see where this goes because there is a way that this could resolve itself in an interesting way. But so far, it's felt very predictable. It's felt a little meandering, a little a little slower paced. Like, I don't even want to use the euphemism deliberately paced. It's a little slower paced, uh, a, a, a series. Or I, I'm just not invested in the characters in the same way so that these scenes of them just kind of standing around talking um, aren't as fun and as captivating and also the ghostly shit isn't all that great, you know? Uh, again, this could turn around in the last four episodes, maybe so. I hope so, because what I'm seeing now, uh, there's one good ghost death. <laughs> and, you know, uh, I like there's a, the, this kind of determined, determined spirit that just takes a dude out uh, on account of him being in the way. And I appreciate that. But also... You know, episode five ends with a secret ghost. And I'm like, mm, I don't know, man. I don't know that I can go that far. I'm not sure. We'll see how it plays out. Like, I need the next episode to be her, <laughs> like, hey, y'all, I'm a fucking ghost. Um, <laughs> I know. I know that we've all been talking and treating each other uh, like... I'm fine, but you know how from episode one, I wasn't eating anything or drinking anything. Uh, and I thought at the time I was like, is she fucking dead? And it w as soon as I thought this, I thought, no, because there, there's too much interactivity. There's too much of her like interacting with the kids and, and with, uh, uh, Owen and like all the other characters and so forth. And then when they go, sure, a fuck enough, they pull a secret ghost on me. And I'm like, mm, all right, I, I'm, I'm going to give you an episode to, to shore this up. But this seems kind of dumb. Um, <laughs> so we'll see. Uh, I'm talking myself into liking this show less uh, the more I think about it. So again, uh, apologies if I'm a bit scattered. I've just watched five hours of, of Netflix vision, television streaming vision, whatever the fuck it's called now. And, uh, I'm a little addled. Um, that was, that was unexpected haunting of Bly Manor. Uh, there are a lot of things about it that, uh, I'm curious to see whether or not they resolve themselves. Early predictions in a weird way, the show may be, ha has subverted my expectations in that they finally got around to paying off a lot of, of, of shit that they've been setting up in this fifth episode. So with that done, I'm curious what the back nine, <laughs> the back nine of this episode is, uh, or the back nine of the series is going to be. Um, but if I, if I, you know, I said some early predictions, uh, I, I think that, uh, Henry Thomas is going to have had something to do with the brother and sister-in-law's death, maybe. Um, I, cause they haven't really described the circumstances of that death to my satisfaction. Um, also the, the little girl keeps talking about a whole house full of ghosts and whatnot. And, uh, I, I, we have yet to see that really made evidence. There's been flickers of that here and there, but it, again, this show has been surprisingly light on the supernatural. Like the most apparent ghost was the one haunting Danny. And that was, you know, entirely metaphorical. Um, I don't know, man. I mean, I'm curious. I want to see, like, I'm seeing it through. I got to see it through. I mean, I, I could bail, but I, I don't want to. Maybe that says something for the show. I, I do want to see how this resolves itself. Uh, so maybe Carlo Gugino will show up uh, in season three and be like, hey, here's uh, the Bell Witch haunting. That'd be cool. Um, <laughs> this time, instead of showing up at a wedding, she shows up at like a bris telling ghost stories about people uh, would have had circumcisions. Okay, that's it. This has been a long one. I apologize. Uh, we had some shit to work through. Uh, be back tomorrow uh, on Sunday, October 11th for another uh, look at the Haunting of Bly Manor. This time we're going to we're gonna finish it and, uh, and see where we are. So, uh, alright everybody. Talk to you tomorrow. Have a spooky Saturday. 